Pieces, and uh, we are starting a new episode of Off the Cuff. Um, I'm sorry it's been a while. I have been dealing with some major life changes as far as moving, uh, getting into a new relationship, things like that. Um, but I do appreciate everyone who is still following and watching. Um, and thank you. Thank you for the support uh, through the years. And, um, and I hope that uh, I'll continue to educate you the best that I can. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about watches and their impact on society. Um, and today I'm wearing a uh, solid gold Samariner or uh, 16808. And it's a really interesting piece. Um, it is, of course, a pre-ceramic model, so these came out in the 80s. But um, anyway, so as far as my thoughts on um, you know, how watches really impact society. I think that, um, you know, um, time is something that none of us can get back, none of us can really replace. And I think that the invention of watches uh, as early as the 16th century really had to do with, you know, man um, mastering time. And, 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 you know, people say that time is a uh, man-made thing, but I think that, you know, when wristwatches came about, it was a lot about uh, man's desire to master his own time. You know, whether he was a factory worker or a big successful businessman, I think that um, keeping time and, and, and tracking that, uh, you know, knowledge is, is, is something that, uh, has only gotten better through the years. I mean, you started with, you know, these these pocket watches and, you know, we've, we've gone all the way up to phones, but I think, but for the interesting thing that people don't talk about wristwatches is why people still collect wristwatches to these days, uh, in my opinion, is because uh, they are, for me and for most of the Western world, maybe not uh, so much in the East, but definitely in the Western world, it's about accomplishment. And it's about denoting that, special occasion in your life. And that's kind of why we started Taylor Time Pieces is because we wanted to um, help people find things that helped to mark important moments in their life, whether that be, um, you know, a birthday or a, um, a wedding or so something of that sort. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really about, uh, not so much, not even so much achievement, but it's about the progression of life. So, you know, for me, I started, my first watch was a Brightman Colt Quartz, and now I'm sitting here in front of you guys today wearing a, a gold Submariner, especially for, for men, and I think why men gravitate towards this hobby is because, um, you know, it does make them feel accomplished. It does, you know, there's a, there's a comedian out there that says, uh, you know, my son got a smart watch and I'm not hating on smartwatches, but he goes, uh, you know, my son got a smartwatch, and um, it's one of those those um, uh, the things that track your heart rate, the whoops. And he goes, you know, uh, my son got this watch, and um, it doesn't tell time; it only tells you how you're doing. And he goes, it's funny because in my day, I looked at my watch and I said, I'm doing well, uh, and I think that that sentiment, even though it's, it, it, it's, it's said in a, you know, uh, funny manner in the joke, which I'm sure he tells much better than I, um, I think that sentiment has been lost on, uh, people, especially men in the generation. So they want to wear something that they can look at the wrist and say, Hey, you know what? I worked hard and I accomplished this. I think that we as a civilization is a very, um, you know, we're very, uh, desired, driven civilization. So I think that um, for me and how watches are fixed society, I think that they are tools that track our biggest moments, you know, whether that be building of a big building or um, 
you know, a birthday like I had mentioned earlier, I, I think that watches do still play a huge part in society. Uh, I think that in the East that might change. I think in the East, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm not from, you know, East Asia or, you know, other, other Eastern parts of the world, but I think that for me, my at least opinion of my, my associates and my friends that are from there are the, um, the legacy part of watchmaking. So you have the movements and you have, you know, that somebody's grandfather or father, brother or uncle, or even some of these days, if you guys have read my articles on, uh, on women in watchmaking that came out a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, somebody created this. And I, I think for me, my biggest, um, takeaway and why I enjoy business so much is the idea that you you built something so I built something from and you know eight hundred dollar Brighton Cook Quartz to a to, to a much larger and hopefully more successful business with with better clients and, and, and more clients so I think uh, in the East they really focus on you know the importance of watches when it comes to the craftsmanship and how well it's made and you know, the, the time and effort that goes into uh, a, a luxury watch. And, and, you know, some people don't know because, you know, they're cranking out millions a year. Um, but it, it is, especially in those, you know, those uh, more independent brands or brands like Patek. Uh, those pieces, they take quite a bit to, you know, to, to build. I mean, I have friends in, in the Patek school here in New York and, um, they could take months to uh, some of the more, you know, in, uh, expansive and, and, and intricate movements can take years to build. So I think that for uh, the idea that, you know, watches are not just about, hey, I got a promotion or hey, you know, maybe I, I had a child that was just born. For me, uh, watches can also be about uh, the time and effort that somebody uh, put into this, this item that now I get to wear on my wrist. Now, of course, uh, when it comes to, you know, a, a show of class and kind of getting your foot in the door, I think that that's also important. I think that uh, when you're wearing a nice watch, you're very much a part of a club of people who wear nice watches. I think that um, it's, it's kind of one of those things, like if you know, you know. Um, and, you know, if you are a car guy and you drive past a nice car, uh, if you are you know, maybe a sports guy and, and, and you know, you, you go to someone's house and they have a beautiful, you know, signed uh, piece of memorabilia on their wall. I think, you know, if you're an artist, you know, my, my girlfriend's an artist and she, you know, when she sees art, she just lights up. So I think for me, uh, especially in the watch world, um, it's, it's building that community and building that network. And I think that, you know, the impact that watches have on society. I think that people, you know, kind of conjugate um, with people that they are very much alike, you know? So if you are wearing a nice watch, you're gonna be around people maybe that are wearing nice watches and, you know, watches are, they, they can get expensive. So in my mind, I say to myself, okay, if I'm gonna be around someone with a nice watch, what do they do to, to, to acquire that watch? Maybe it was inherited, yes, but in, oftentimes with the people that I work with, they have businesses, they have companies, they have you know, entities that allow them, to, that afford them to enjoy this lovely hobby of ours. Um, and and you know, to be able to tap into that knowledge, I think is something that um, really, really needs to uh, be put in the forefront of, of watch collecting because I have heard, you know, through the years people saying to me, you know, my, my parents and my grandparents, you know, uh, some of which, you know, my dad does have a nice couple nice watches, but, you know, everyone makes a joke that, uh, you know, why do I need a watch when I have a phone? And and I, I think that for, for me, it's it's about the heritage of the watch. The, the phone is, is, is gorgeous, but, you know, the iPhone only goes back to what, 2007? Uh, you don't have, you know, hey, um, Rolex, you know, the, the you know, the 1908s and, and you know, how, how somebody, uh, you know, from Breitling, how, how they, they started the business and, you know, 
hundreds of years later now it's and it's this thing that you know i get to put on my wrist every day and i get to look at and i get to look at the 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 tens or hundreds of men and women that you know put this watch together for me to wear and i, I think that's a great honor uh that that a lot of people don't get i mean yes that's true with any product i mean you know with any product you have hundreds of people that 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 are probably involved with the, the making of that product, whether it be a phone or a laptop. Uh, but I think that the amount of craftsmanship and, and, and care that goes into a lot of these pieces uh, needs to be recognized. I think that, you know, for the future of watches, I, I have seen and I do believe that, um, you know, overall, I think that uh, people in general, um, I think that people in general uh, do see society shifting towards uh maybe more technologically advanced watches uh, i know a lot of the the uh major brands such as tag and hublot have you know jumped into the smart watch craze and you do have these really nice you know the tag golf watches and the hublot watch um that you know do have its place in a collector's uh, wardrobe and a place in a collector's you know uh area of interest but i think for me, nothing beats the, the, the incredible craftsmanship of, you know, just something like a Rolex or something like a Tudor or something like a, a, a you know, even these independent brands, Louis Monet, uh, you know, you have Vacheron, you know, the, 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 the cross-stitch hashing of, 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 of Vacheron and, and that, uh, you know, gorgeous uh, finish and, 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 you know, uh, details that they put into each and every one of those pieces. And I think that, you know, as a society, I think that we, um, you know, really still do put a lot of thought and effort in not just our appearance, but, you know, how we carry ourselves. And so if you were to ask me how watches affect society, I think watches are something that um, is really the cornerstone of society because watches are about time and, and, you know, appearance. And I think that from the beginning of that, we have been very obsessed with tracking time and making sure that we do look good. And, you know, over at Taylor Time Pieces, we do try our best uh, to, you know, realize that and, and you know, uh, take care of every piece that we have and, and make it known that, uh, you know, our, 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 you know, industry and our business is, is something that people work their entire lives for. You know, I, I've had clients that, you know, will work, you know, most of their life for a, for a Rolex or a Patek, something like that. So, you know, that's definitely not lost on me as the, as the owner of Taylor Time Pieces, and I don't think it should be lost on society, that these things are things that we, we work for, things that we strive for, and, um, yeah, I'm just glad to be a part of it. So I know this episode is a little shorter than uh, maybe some of my, my previous episodes, but I'm really glad uh, that I was able to get my thoughts on it. And we do have a blog uh, post on it if you go onto our website, uh, taylortimepieces.com. And we also have a Facebook group and a community that, uh, that we started not too long ago. And um, we think that uh, it's, it's a great way to connect all of our, uh, you know, interested uh watchers and 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 collectors that uh, that have been following us and that have been working with us through the years so um you know this video when it comes out all the information is going to be on the uh, bottom in the description uh, taylortimepieces.com and we also have a facebook group and a community as far as uh, if you guys want to join that group uh, and start talking about watches and collecting watches um and of course you can always reach out to me and you know of course nick uh, at any time and um, you know I'm, I'm very much looking forward to uh, reviving this channel and getting some great content out for you guys thanks